Hello everyone. Today we are going to start the course on accelerator physics. And uh, as has been mentioned in the preamble, uh, this will have three modules. The first module will be on DC accelerators, second on linear accelerators, third one will be cyclic accelerators, and there will be a, a, a separate lecture on the laser plasma accelerators where the much higher gradients can be achieved and the le total length of the accelerator can be very short. So we will start the first lecture and of course the first uh, question which comes to mind is that uh, uh, why we need accelerators and uh, the main aim of accelerators is to or even the science is to study that what are the building blocks of the matter and their interactions and uh, one of the most uh, important aspect which we, which scientists would like to know is that how the universe originated and how it has happened. For example, uh, one of the theories is uh, Big Bang theory and if you want to create that uh, situation then the, that can be done in lab using the accelerator. So origin of the universe uh, uh, can be studied using high energy accelerators. Of course uh, when you want to study the matter that means you want to study the properties of nucleus or uh, nucleons like protons and uh, neutrons and uh, subdivided particles then the, the, the whose size is very small in fact if you take the uh, uh, nucleus the fire sizes of the order of fermi and one fermi is 10 power minus 15 meter or 10 power minus 13 centimeter so uh, when you are going to use the probe or any particle then the uh, wavelength associated with this should be of this order then only you can study these particles. This is somewhat similar to a microscope uh, to the biologist and the telescope to the astrophysicist and uh, there again the wavelength matters and uh, the reason being that the resolution of uh, matter microscopes is proportional to the wavelength and that depends, that is inversely proportional to the uh, momentum and you know that momentum is proportional to E or rather root E then the higher the energy, a smaller will be the wavelength and the high resolution can be achieved. This is demonstrated here in this one that uh, uh, higher the momentum that means shorter the wavelength so you can have a better resolution. Sometimes uh, even the low mass particles can be used for uh, creating a very heavy particles uh, who are having masses very large and that is because of uh, Einstein's equation uh, where energy and matter are equivalent and uh, this is shown by this equation E is equal to mc square and uh, m is nothing but is the mass of the particle which is gamma times m naught and m naught is the rest mass and c is the velocity of light so uh, when the in particle energy increases its mass also increases and therefore at higher uh, velocities or high, higher uh, energies the mass of that particle increases and uh, you will be able to create uh, uh, much heavier particles and that is shown here that if beta, beta which is V by C is of the order of uh, let's say 0 0.99 then the gamma is 7 which means that particle has become 7 times heavier than the particle at rest and if it is let's say 0 0.999 then it will become 2000 and that precisely the reason why we are able to create uh, very heavy particles uh, using the uh, light particles at higher energies. <coughs> so uh, let us see what is an accelerator. Accelerator is an instrument 
which increase the, the kinetic energy of the charged particles. It could be electrons or it could be protons or even heavy ions. So different kind of accelerators will uh, increase the energies, kinetic energy basically, of different kind of particles. But at low energy, the kinetic energy is, uh, which we know is half mv square. And uh, at this low energy, the mass of the particle will be m0 rest mass and uh, which will not be, uh, so gamma will be 1. High energy, of course, the mass also increases as per this, uh, which I have already discussed, where mass of the particle is given by this equation, where beta is b by c. So if, let's say, uh, v, the velocity of the particle is equal to c, then this becomes almost like uh, uh, infinity, that is uh, m0 is equal to m is equal to m0 under root 1 minus beta square. So if you put uh, if you put beta is equal to 1 then this this factor becomes uh, 0 and therefore m becomes infinity very large as compared to the rest mass. Now that is why at high energies uh, at uh, uh, 6.5 TeV in a proton-proton collision, collision at uh, large hadron collider, Higgs bosons, which are also called God particles, were produced and the mass of the Higgs boson is around 125 GeV. And uh, you, you might be wondering that how a 125 GeV particle can be produced when the rest mass of the proton colliding with proton, that means each is roughly about 1 GeV, actually it is uh, 935 MeV, so let's say it is 1 GeV, and two 1 GeV particles when they collide with each other, interact with each other, they produce a Higgs boson of uh, a 125 GeV. And that is all because of this increase in the mass, because of uh, increase in the velocity. So that's the reason. Now uh, let us see how uh, how these accelerators work. What are the basics involved in it? The kinetic energy of the particle is half mv square, as I mentioned earlier. But in the layman's language, an accelerator means suppose I have two electrodes. One is grounded, and the other is having a voltage of v. And if a particle let's say electron is injected, then the energy gained by the time it reaches the second electrode is Ev. E is the charge of the particle and V is the voltage difference. It is not necessary that it should be grounded, but the voltage difference has to be V. So if it is V1 here, it can be V2 and the difference V2 minus V1 has to be V. Now the various units used, here what has happened that since it is positively charged, electron will be attracted because of Coulomb attraction. And if suppose you inject positive charge, then it will not get accelerated, then the V has to be minus V so for attraction. Uh, or it can be even, the, uh, you can have V here and grounded this one and then you inject positive charge and then it will be accelerated to the same energy because of Coulomb repulsion. Now the different units which are used are listed here for your convenience and uh, they are the KeV which is the uh, 1 KeV is 1000 electron volts and 1 MeV is 1000 KeV that means 1 million electron volts and so on. And today if you see high energy particles in TV ranges are also available and uh, for example the uh, large hadron collider where uh, the maximum as per the design, the 7 TeV proton will be colliding with 7 TeV uh, another proton. So the center of mass energy in that case will be 7 plus 7 is equal to 14 TeV because particles are coming from opposite direction. Now if you compare that uh, as compared to the rest masses, the rest mass of the electron is only 0.5 MeV. 511 keV, proton is 531 MeV, neutron is slightly heavier, is 938 MeV. And of course, uh, when we 
uh, talk about it. We know the Einstein equation, which I have discussed earlier, E is equal to mc squared. So energy, this kinetic energy can be converted into mass. These are some of the other units, which are uh, other uh, parameters, which are listed here. For example, charge of the proton, which is equal to charge of the electron is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. Now, as per this, uh, uh, I showed you that there are two electrodes. Is it necessary that we should have only two electrodes or can we divide this into several? And in fact, there, are, there is an advantage that if you divide this into several uh, pieces and you have instead of total V across two electrodes, we can have delta V1, V2, V3, etc. You can divide into and there is an advantage of it. But if the total total voltage difference is V, then the kinetic energy will remain same. But then the, the there is an advantage which is uh, by uh, law is uh, is that uh, you can you will be able to get higher uh, volt, voltage across that. For example, if you have let's say two electrodes here and this is ground and this is V and this is let's say is one meter one meter and it is it is able to extend a voltage of V as compared to this now what happens that uh, if you divide this into two portions then in, pre in principle this should be V by 2 but it happens that because of Pashtun's law happens that it is able to extend more than V by 2. So therefore in accelerating tubes which are used in the accelerators, normally we divide that into several pieces and you will see in subsequent lecture that if you do this then there are several advantages and one advantage is that the voltage which you can uh, hold on this will be higher than V but it will be much more than that. Now coming back to the accelerators, what are the different components which you should understand is one of uh, one of the thing is that uh, we want to accelerate the particles therefore they should be produced. So there should be ion production and that means for doing that there has to be ion source or it could be sources also there may be more than one sources in, in the in the in the accelerator. And then in the case of DC accelerators, you have to generate the voltage. So there has to be a voltage generator. And then uh, as per this, as I said, that there has to be a voltage gradient. And that not only helps in getting the higher voltages, but also in focusing. So acceleration has to be uh, done. And large gradient will help in attaining higher voltages. Now normally, uh, in any accelerator, the ions coming from the ion source are defocusing type. They are not, uh, they will have cert certain diversion. And therefore, before getting into the accelerator, they have to be focused. And therefore, there have to be focusing systems. Then uh, at each stage, we should have a beam diagnostic systems because we should know whether it is defocusing, focusing, or what is the current and we have to monitor them and uh, not only we should monitor but also we should control them so we have to have monitoring and control systems then we should also have uh, energy measurement devices uh, and control also and uh, we should be having anal analysis uh, systems for that that means when you have accelerated using the accelerator we should be able to measure that what is the energy and if suppose energy is slightly different, we should be able to control it and correct it. That means we have to have a feedback system. So analysis has to be done and there will be lecture on this portion. Ultimate aim is of course that uh, this beam should be utilized and therefore there has to be experimental system here which is shown here and that could be a scattering chamber or uh, which uh, is housing a lot of detectors and things like that. So a, a typical uh, lay, layout of that accelerator is given here, which is you can see different components. So you can see that beam handling components are, are not only immediately after ion source, 
as but also after the axle beam is accelerated that means at the high energy side of this uh, because that as as i said that uh, beam is diff uh, diverging right from ion source as well as from the most of the time uh, from accelerated beam from the accelerator also and therefore it has to be done now uh, this accelerators uh, based on the different criteria different parameters uh, are divided into uh, three to four categories and the simplest category and the most earlier uh, developed category was uh, dc accelerators but the problem there is that you can get uh, voltage gradients of not more than 1 to 2 million volts per meter and therefore they were they could be used only to accelerate particles for uh, low energies then this was improved and a new technology came and rf technology was invoked and uh, the accelerators based on that rf technology is called rf accelerators which could be linear accelerator if the particle is uh, moving in the linear uh, uh, path then they are called linear accelerators or it could be cyclic if they are moving almost uh, they are moving as well as uh, getting accelerated in the circle or close to circle then they are called cyclic accelerators they could also be these accelerators could also be room temperature uh, that means the structures are working at uh, room temperature or they could be lower to the temperature superconducting temperature so the uh, structures are superconducting and uh, the, the voltage gradients uh, which could be achieved in these two different structures are different for example in the case of room temperature these uh, gradients are less than about uh, 5 million volts per meter 5 to 10 maximum while in the case of superconducting it could be 50 to 100 in that range maximum up to 100 so these are the things now this also will not be enough if you want to uh, uh, accelerate the particles to higher energy and therefore some other kind of technology has to come in and uh, one technology which has uh, broken all these barriers is called uh, laser plasma accelerators where uh, uh, gradients accelerating gradients of uh, 100 to 300 gb per meter are possible in fact the gradients up to 100 gb per meter has been measured uh, uh, and have been achieved and measured so if you compare this you see that uh, if suppose i have a dc accelerator which is 1 million volt per meter type of gradient then if you are having a you want to design an accelerator which will accelerate the particles to 1 tv then it will be almost like one uh, uh, thousand kilometer long because the gradient is very small and uh, if it is a one million volt per meter then it is about one million mbv and therefore the length will be almost like thousand kilometer which is impossible this is uh, inconvenient and therefore it will not be possible to get so you have to find the technologies new technology where the gradients are and if the gradients of this type are available then you can see that even 100 gb 100 to 200 gb energy particles can be achieved in one meter itself so if you take go to let's say one tv then in that case it will be only about 10 meter distance but of course there are technological difficulties in that but you see the whole accelerator uh, with this kind of gradient will be of the order of uh, 10 uh, meter only no so these uh, accelerators they not only have been categorized on the basis of energies and the type of structures we use but also on what kind of uh, voltages are uh, applied to accelerate the particles for example in the case of dc accelerators uh, in this category come the cockcroft walton wendigraff accelerators tandem accelerators peloton and dynamotron where all the dc voltage is used and in dc voltages most of the time or rather all the time 
the ions are passed through only once therefore the there uh, there is a energy limitation and uh, we cannot go to very high energy but of course uh, they have other advantages and that is that the energy resolution is very high and therefore uh, if you want to study the resonance kind of uh, uh, nuclear reactions particularly nuclear spectroscopy then they are the best uh, accelerators and they are still very popular everywhere in the world where the more accurate measurements have to be done there the dc accelerators are used particularly nowadays the peloton in the case of rf accelerators they are uh, linear or we call them linux and there is a uh, one accelerator called rf cube radio frequency quarter hole rf cube which actually has a sort of uh, uh, revolutionized the whole thing and this does all the three functions of focusing bunching and acceleration together as a consequence of that the beam transmission can go up to even 100% but mostly more than 90% then in this category are cyclotron synchrocyclotron isochronous cyclotron and uh, synchrotrons and uh, colliding rings because in colliding rings you are able to uh, get the central mass energy which is sum of uh, uh, e1 plus e2 that means e1 is the energy of this particle and e2 is this then they when they come together from opposite direction the central mass energy will be e1 plus e2 which is not the case in the case of when fixed target is there and the particle is in fact uh, if uh, if the fixed target experiments are there then the energy required for doing the same thing is uh, very 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 high which is not achievable and as i mentioned that this laser plasma accelerators which are still in r&d stage voltage gradients of uh, 100 to 300 gv per meter are uh, possible in fact up to 100 uh, gv per meter has been uh, uh, have been measured even but they 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 have been measured over a very short uh, very short lengths and therefore the uh, total energy which could be achieved in this case is uh, uh, limited and therefore the lot of r&d has to be done to to uh, go to very high energies let's say in tv or um, of course then you will like to know at some stage that what is the energy ulti- what is the ultimate goal of it. so these were two categories there is a third category which uh, defines the accelerators and uh, most of the time we call them uh, low energy accelerators if the uh, accelerators are in the range of uh, uh, 100 kv to 100 mbv then we call them low energy x in fact uh, there are almost like 30 to 40000 accelerators operating in the world and they are uh, Uh, their energy range is uh, few kv to few tvs and therefore the ener- uh, accelerators which are in the range of 100 kv to 100 mv we call them low energy accelerators then we call them uh, uh, medium energy accelerators if the energy is in the range of 100 mv to few gv uh, earlier they were called high energy accelerators but now with the progress of the accelerators we call them medium energy accelerators and high energy accelerators is few gv to tv regions now because that that kind of accelerators are also possible therefore high energy accelerators uh, are able to provide beams of tv energies then we have uh, accelerators uh, for electrons uh, then for proton accelerators and also the heavy ion accelerators now just to give you an idea that what kind of things are available at this mean uh, cost is one thing which defines uh, that uh, how big accelerator you can make because in some cases it can be several billion dollars and uh, size also defines because the whole uh, thing has to be aligned within micron so you can keep increasing even if you are not worried about cost you can keep increasing the length but the entire structure has to be aligned within microns and that becomes very difficult so they become very large 
And for example, if you take LSC, which is a large head-on collider, then the circumference is 27 kilometers. And CERN is also planning to build one future accelerator. This is called FCC, Future Cyclic Accelerators or Future Circular Accelerators. And the circumference of that will be almost like 100 kilometers. Cost, of course, will be several billion dollars. There are some uh, parameters of that FCC are given here, and uh, that is a future accelerator at CERN, which has been uh, planned. In fact, uh, uh, CERN Council has uh, approved the uh, to make the studies for that. It has been accepted in uh, April 2020, and the studies. Uh, uh, feasible studies have started with that. And one of the aims of that will be to search the new particles. See, it was uh, in the LSC already we have we have uh, discovered the uh, Higgs boson. And therefore, uh, in these uh, heavy ion, uh, this uh, high energy particle, high energy accelerators, we would like to see whether some more particles can be discovered. And then what are the interactions among these? For example, one of the aim of this is to study the Higgs Higgs boson uh, interaction, how they interact with each other, and uh, of course, uh, and this is uh, at this moment the cost estimate is twenty three billion dollars, and it will use superconducting uh, magnets, and energy central mass energy will be for hadrons it will be about hundred TeV. Now this will have three options. One is that uh, there will be head-on collisions studies like proton-proton or proton-heavy ions. Other one will be electron and positron collisions as well, as was the case in the former uh, LEP lab, uh, large electron-positron collider, large. And then it will also have an option to study proton-electron collisions. Now, but just to give you an uh, idea about that what is possible in the present uh, uh, Large Hadron Collider is that in Large Hadron Collider, two uh, proton beams, each of seven, uh, seven TeV uh, will collide. And uh, as I said that suppose it is a circular one, the one proton is coming from this side and that is seven TeV. And another proton is coming from this side, which is again 7 TeV. And let's say this is uh, this is the uh, nuclear uh, or the experimental area. Then these two uh, protons, which are 7 TeV each, with the will have uh, interaction. And the center of mass energy, is, which is E1 plus E2 will be 14 TeV, it can be, this is the 14 TeV. So that is the, that is the parameters of this.